All right, so I want to talk about Wii Party, and let me tell you, I'm a big Wii Party fan. Is it because I have no actual friends to party with? No. Okay, maybe, but it's also just a really solid minigame collection, okay? So, Wii Party has a lot going on with it, at least compared to the other games in the Wii series, that is. Instead of being a tech demo or gimmicky, Wii Party is a lot more like a Mario Party substitute, and I don't really mean that in a negative way. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as the Mario Parties that came out before it, but it sure is a whole lot better than what followed. Wii Party was developed by Indie Cube, who had done some work for Nintendo in the early 2000s, most notably with an F-Zero game. Wii Party was their first big game for Nintendo, and what would get them through the door to work on many more projects for Nintendo going forward. Honestly, I think Indie Cube did a really good job with Wii Party, and we'll get into that eventually, but it is obvious why Nintendo started to trust them with more future projects. After the release of Wii Party, the main developer of the Mario Party games switched from Hudson Soft to Indie Cube, which given their experience, and dare I say success with Wii Party, that wasn't the worst move by Nintendo. But if you know anything about Mario Party going forward from 8, it was all downhill after that change. Thankfully, with the newer games, they were turning things around, but Mario Party is still far from its golden days. And to give you the full extent of what Indie Cube has done with Nintendo, they are responsible for Animal Crossing Amiibo Fest. So I'll just leave that one there. But this is a discussion about Wii Party, not Mario Party or Indie Cube. I just wanted to say all that to say that Indie Cube's first real jab at anything with Nintendo was actually pretty good. So with the groundwork laid, what is a Wii Party? Well, to put it simply, it's basically a Mario Party game with a Wii series coat of paint. Once again, not a bad thing to say. Wii Party does not try to be anything besides what it is. It knows exactly what it set out to do and does just that, which I think is respectable. There are a few creative ideas here and there, and I think that the minigames are really good for a Mario Party clone. Overall, it stands out just enough to not get thrown in with the forgotten pile of abandoned Mario Party clones, at least in my opinion. But enough of me trying to articulate my thoughts, let's get into the game itself. Upon starting up the game, we are greeted by the one, the only, Party Phil. If you know that disgusting creature from Wii Music known as Sebastian Dude, it's essentially him, but much better. I don't know how, since they basically act the same for both games, but anyone I know who knows both will agree that Party Phil is 10 times better. But aside from that short introduction, you pretty much hop straight into everything. There's no long-winded tutorial, no being forced to unlock all the other game modes or minigames. You pretty much have everything in this game to offer available to you right from the beginning, which I think is great for a party game. It makes it really easy to pop the game in and start it up playing really quick when you have friends or just trying to play the game. I know that there are some people who really enjoy unlockables and party games, and I totally understand that. But with how casual and simple this game is, it's really nice to have everything available to you from the beginning. Heck, the only unlockable in the game is a minigame mode that only requires you to play every 4 player minigame at least once, and that's not hard to do at all. The main game mode in Wii Party is Board Game Island, at least in my opinion. This is a part of the party games category and is the closest thing to a standard Mario Party experience. But Wii Party does a few creative changes to make this different enough. For starters, the board is linear, and the goal is to reach the end instead of gathering a token collectible throughout the map. Which, I know a lot of people complain about linear boards in games like these, but I think that Board Game Island manages to be linear and still be a really good board at the same time. There are tons of spaces that can just send you forward, backward, swap you with another player, send you into a volcano, which me and my brother would call hell when we were kids. There is so much that can go on. I've played games where I will be far into the lead, and within a few turns, I'm almost back to the beginning. You really have to just sit down and play this board to truly understand the chaos that ensues. Something this board does to somewhat level the playing field and keep one player from getting too far ahead is have what I call roadblocks or checkpoints. Every so often on the board, you will run into an obstacle that will require a certain dice roll to get past. Even the condition to win the game is blocked behind one of these obstacles, where you have to roll a 6 or higher. It's really funny because you can get really early head start with high rolls and then get stuck behind one of these obstacles and everyone will just catch up to you. So if you ever get behind, there is a very realistic hope of catching up. Another interesting thing this game mode does, and a lot of Wii Party does, is instead of rolling a dice at the beginning of the game to determine player order, you do what Wii Party calls play for position. Before each round, everyone plays a 4 player minigame, and depending on the outcome of the minigame depends on which order you play in. So, first place goes first, second place second, and so on. There is much more incentive to winning the minigame other than just play order though. First, second, and third place all get bonus dice to use. With the higher you place, the better your dice is. 
So if you dominate mini games each round, you will be so far ahead because you are rolling with two six-sided dice each turn. Honestly, the utter chaos and luck that is cluttered into this map, the game mode is so fun to play. I highly recommend trying Board Game Island out if you have not, and you ever get the chance. Easily my favorite part of Wii Party. The next game mode that is a part of the same category as Board Game Island is Globetrot. This is another unique game mode that has a bunch of creative ideas. I just think that a lot ends up landing flat compared to Board Game Island, at least for me that is. The idea is that the board is a scaled down version of the earth and there is landmark spaces in different countries that you want to try and land on to earn souvenir pictures. These pictures act as the stars from Mario Party to give them a comparison. I think what sets this game mode apart the most is that you use numbered cards to move instead of a dice. I'm not the biggest fan of this concept, but I guess it's whatever. Overall, the game mode is one of my least favorite from just how boring it can be to play. I would definitely rather play Board Game Island with all its randomness. I do want to say though, I can see Globetrot being a lot more fun with friends, but sitting down and only playing with computer players is not the greatest of times. And yes, I did just once again admit to having no friends. The last three game modes in the Party Games tab are essentially ways to play the minigames without directly playing the minigames. There is typically a short activity that goes on and then you're into a minigame. And this will go on for about 10 rounds or so. Really, the only reason you would pick these game modes over just playing the minigames directly is there is an encouragement for you to do best in the minigames because there will typically be a reward associated with winning. And at the end of the 10 rounds, there is an overall winner for the game mode. Maybe it's a little difficult to explain, but take Swap Meet for example. If you win the minigame, you get to pick which meat you want first, meaning that you get a better chance at getting the meat you need. The overall objective of Swap Meet is to get a row of matching meats, so you can see where getting to pick first will have its benefit to winning the minigames. And it's the same thing with Bingo. If a minigame ball is rolled out, you obviously play a minigame, and the winner gets to pick which me on their board they want to mark off. And this could literally mean you winning the game if you only needed one space left. My favorite out of this category of games is Spinoff, because it really does make you feel like you're a part of a game show with a big wheel and absurd point system. It's goofy and has a bit of randomness, but this was a game that I just dominated from the beginning, so of course I was going to have fun with it. The highlight for me was when the bank got so large and someone spun a minigame spot and I won that minigame, netting me like 20,000 points. So that was fun. But yeah, that's the party games category and the main bulk of Wii Party. Admittedly, there isn't too much here, but I think that what is here is good enough and does have some creativity and diversity to it. There is a category of games that you were supposed to play with a close buddy, and it's fun from what I remember a long time ago. Those are focused on pair minigames, which you work together instead of against each other. If you can get someone to play these, they're short 10 to 15 minute games. I'd totally recommend checking a couple of these out. There is a house party mode, if I am correct, this is just where you use Wii Party as a more traditional board game, and it has you do stuff in the real world like passing a Wii remote around. I could be completely wrong though, it's been forever since I've played this game mode. So that pretty much just leaves us with the mini games themselves. There is a very solid collection of mini games here, and a party game is only as good as its mini games at the end of the day. There are a few really good mini games that I would honestly say are better than most Mario Party mini games. I don't know if that's a controversial thing to say or not, but I'll stand by it. Zombie Tag will forever be my favorite minigame from any party game. This is definitely a biased opinion from my nostalgia of Wii Party playing this minigame laughing at just how goofy it was as a kid, and from nostalgia of playing actual Zombie Tag with my friends all the way through elementary school into middle school. That was one of the games we'd almost always play no matter what age we were. So yeah, I've got a lot of nostalgia connected to this game, and when I saw that Wii Party had a version of that game as a minigame, I was instantly in love. I'm not going to go into every single minigame in Wii Party, but they range from simple to complex and extremely short to a bit long. It's a very good variety. At the end of the day, your opinion on the minigames is ultimately going to be your own, and if you don't like this set of minigames, I can respect that. Me personally, I think it's a pretty top-notch selection. One last thing that I want to talk about with Wii Party is the one unlockable in the game, that being the game mode Spot the Sneak. This is one of my favorite modes in Wii Party, and I really wish that more games, especially the Mario Party games, would borrow from this game mode. Basically, it's a way to play a bunch of mini games back to back to back, but each round a random player is chosen to be what they call a sneak. Being the sneak gives you an edge at the mini game where you can toggle a cheat or you just have an advantage by default. 
It's really fun, and you end up having to actually be strategic about it because you get points for winning the minigame, and being the sneak lets you win easily. But if you get caught, the players that found you out will get points as well. It's a lot of fun, and like I said, I really wish more games had a mode similar to this. But yeah, that's basically it for Wii Party. It's a lot more in-depth and content-rich compared to the other games in the Wii series, that's for sure. But the party doesn't stop here. Oh no. We've got Wii Party U to look at as well. Honestly, if you forgot about this game, I don't blame you. Firstly, it was on the Wii U, so that alone isn't a great start. And from there, it only sold a little under 2 million copies, making it one of the worst selling games in the Wii series. I ended up getting this game back when Nintendo would offer Club Nintendo members the choice between four games to pick and you would get a free digital copy. The four games being New Super Mario Bros. U, Pikmin 3, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, and of course, Wii Party U. I already owned New Super Mario Bros. U, and I had no interest in the Pikmin series, so it left me the option between Legend of Zelda Wind Waker or Wii Party U. So even at the time when I wasn't super big into gaming, this was still a tough choice for me. But why I ultimately went with Wii Party U over the Wind Waker was because I knew of how much of a good time I had with the first Wii Party game. And I knew that I could play this game with my brother since this was a shared console at the time, and I knew he wouldn't end up playing the Wind Waker. So in a rare turn of events, I was actually a selfless kid in that moment. I did end up buying and playing through the Wind Waker because of a sale the eStore had eventually, so if you were wondering about that, yes, I did get Wind Waker. And if you're wondering about Pikmin 3, it still doesn't interest me. Honestly, looking back, I don't regret picking Wii Party U since looking at the prices for that game now. Yeah. So, Wii Party U is a lot of the same from before. You see, you've got the Wii, you've got the party, and I still have no friends. Yes, I am going to overuse that joke. Okay, but in all seriousness, Wii Party U is literally just Wii Party on the Wii U. Of course, it's not the exact same game, but there really isn't that much here to change things up from the first time around. You have what you would expect. The main category here is TV Party, which is the exact same thing as the Party Games category from the first game. Here is where you can find what I consider to be the highlight game mode of Wii Party U, that being Gamepad Island, because it's not a true Wii U game without a gamepad gimmick thrown in. The biggest problem with this game mode? You need two players to play this. I have played this in the past, and it's a lot like Board Game Island from Wii Party, but it's just not the same in my opinion. You have to do a lot of different things on the gamepad, hence the name, and it's really annoying going back and forth between a Wiimote and the gamepad. It's not terrible, but like, it could be better. But since I can't play Gamepad Island due to the lack of... I'm just going to move to the second main game mode, Highway Rollers. The gimmick of this game is that it's a very long linear board. It's about 300 spaces long from beginning to end. But don't worry if that sounds like it will take forever. Depending on how you place in the mini games, you will get a ton of bonus dice to roll. So you can move pretty far in some rounds. There are even some sections of the board littered with event spaces, but they are never as creative or hectic as we have seen in the first Wii Party game. This game mode is fun, especially with friends, because someone can get really stuck far behind and then catch up in the blink of an eye. But it does get very repetitive since the board has no variation to it throughout the entire thing. The most exciting thing that happened to me when I was playing was at the very end of the game when I happened to land on a help last place space, and I ended up rolling the UFO. Since two people were on the same spot tied for last place, this brought everyone to the same spot on the board pretty much. Then, someone else landed on a help the last place, giving us all move ahead by 20 spaces, which was just enough to put us all at the finish line. Like in Board Game Island, there is an obstacle blocking you from winning, so it was one round where three of us were attempting the obstacle. It was pretty funny how it all ended up playing out, because it was like none of the rest of the game actually mattered up until this point. But that's pretty much Highway Rollers, you play a mini game and roll a bunch of dice. There's really not much to it. The last bulky game mode here is Me Fashion Plaza. This is a very interesting game mode because it's a fairly small board, but the goal isn't to reach the end, but rather collect a certain amount of clothing throughout the way. There really isn't that much to it, but the concept is pretty neat. This is very luck dependent, but that can lead to some pretty funny moments and some frustrating ones too. In terms of what's left, 
We have a version of that arcade game where you put quarters in the machine and try to dump a lot more out. It's fun and quick, but there's not really that much to it. And then there is unfortunately a version of Swap Meet, but it's even more confusing. There are so many possible combinations that the Wii U gamepad is used to display a rulebook of combos. I do not like this game mode, but I'll be honest and say that it is because I am bad at it. There are a few other categories that return from Wii Party, but almost everything relies on having two or more people to play with, which pretty much leaves us with just the minigames left. And I have mixed feelings about the minigames. There are some really good minigames in this collection, but they're missing a lot of the charm and creativity from the first game. There are tons of reused ideas and straight up copies of minigames they've already done in the last game. And some of these games drag on for way too long. And to make it all worse, there is only 4 player and 1v3 player minigames. I guess overall it could be worse selection of games, but with how hit or miss it can be, it's just average overall. So yeah, that's pretty much We Party You. I feel like I went through that game fairly quickly, but that's because it's a lot of what was the same from Wii Party. Now, would I love to see a sequel to Wii Party on the Nintendo Switch like how Wii Sports got? Absolutely! I would love to see this game return in some way. Besides Wii Sports, I dare to say that this is the best that the Wii series has to offer, and I almost would go as far as to argue that it's even better than Wii Sports. Andy Cube did develop Clubhouse games for the Switch, and they are still the devs for Mario Party, so maybe there is a chance Wii Party eventually gets a sequel someday. Now, would I be sad if we never got another sequel? No, I wouldn't really be sad, but if there ever is a sequel, you definitely won't hear me complaining. I would say to check either, if not both of these games out if you haven't before, and if you do own either of these games, pop them back in sometime and give them another chance to see how they hold up for you. I mean, there's definitely much worse party games you could play with your time. <coughs> Mario Party 9. 